ever need someone to clean up the evidence after a crime so that way that pesky Batman doesn't figure out your plan, call an eraser so he can erase it with his head. And if Batman comes and tries to stop him, he'll use his pencil toes on his boots to fight back. Yeah, I've researched most of these villains and they're actually pretty cool, a lot of them. There was this great video that I saw, I might put the link in the description, might not. And again, I watched like 10 videos, I'm probably going to forget to put the link in the description. But basically just search all Lego Batman movie villains explained and you'll get a million videos of them. But this is like one of my favorite minifigs in the series. Because he has these yellow pants, and as you can see they have little pencil tips printed on the toes there. He has all these stripes going up and down him on the sides of his legs, sides of his arms. Pretty much the only place that it's not on. His like body and legs is on the back of the legs and underneath the arms. So that's very well done and it makes him look like a number two pencil. He's wearing a little black kind of a vest, like turtleneck under there. He's holding this plaque that says to erase and it looks like a notebook there. And then his head, it's not the ordinary minifig size. It's basically a one by one a cylinder, except not really. It's slightly different in shape, as you can see. And then has this one by one tile as the eraser on the top of his head. And he is just such an interesting minifig. He's just weird and cool. And then the print on his face is just these two eyes, kind of a plain, bland print, but it fits because that's all that was on the character's face. Here is Nurse Harley Quinn. She's kind of a little interesting, I guess you could say. She's wearing like this doctor's uniform, and she has this uh, stethoscope there, and there's a bunch of detailing there. Uh, double molded legs. She has some little pink lab gloves on, though uh, from all other angles you can see that there isn't much else. I think they should have double molded them. That would have been really nice. On the back, there's a little bit of printing. She has the same Harley hair, Harley Quinn hair. That's in the Joker Notorious Lowrider, and I'm pretty sure it's the same face. If not, it's just slightly differently printed. But then on the top of this hair, this little nurse's hat goes in. It's just like on this little stud there that plugs into a hole. And since that's off center of on the hat makes her hat kind of off-center, and she was seen very briefly in the movie like this. And I don't know why I put her hair back on, because I was going to be taking it off anyway, so that way you can see the prints a bit better. She's just kind of smiling and has the black mask. There's this 2x2 two two, uh, tile in sand blue, and it has this kind of clipboard look, and it says Arkham Asylum. It has, like, Joker's profile, and it says H plus J with hearts, Harley Quinn plus Joker. Overall, she's a weird, interesting minifig. Speaking of interesting, here's Orca. She is weird, to say the least, and very interesting. There's a Sharkman minifig. I actually have him. And it's basically the same pieces here, except different prints. It has this big kind of shark fin piece here, except it's printed as an Orca. And then instead of arms, it has these black fins. And there's the legs are white with black, and the body's black with white. So the whites and blacks don't exactly match up. The whites are where it's the biggest color in difference. The black, it's pretty similar, but here it's a much more uh, clear, pure white. There it's kind of dark and kind of creamy and slightly blue tinged. So that doesn't really match up, but you can easily overlook it. And then the great thing about this minifig is when you take that off, the head here is just a giant mouth to make the mouth for the inside. That head is probably really fun to mess around with and like put on different minifigs. It's just such a weird head that you don't see anything like. And then sadly, there's no back printing. I mean, like a decent amount of it's covered up by that tail. But the part that's not there could easily have had like a bit of white printing. And also, there's no printing on the back of the legs. So that part looks really weird where half of it's just plain black and half of it's just plain white. Other than that, great minifig. Chomp, chomp, chomp. 
Next up, Zodiac Master. And you probably can't see much past the silver crab and silver fish, which are actually weapons which he ripped off the costume. Once again, I did research about the character. Yeah, these would be on his costume, and then he would rip these off and use them as weapons. It's just a silver fish, which is kind of the generic color for the fish. I haven't seen it in many other colors other than, like, orange, and I think I've seen it a few times in red. And then the silver crab, I've never seen it in silver, so that's really interesting. And now we can actually see the minifig here. And he has a bunch of zodiac signs on the front of his costume, on the arms, sides, legs, back... Also, he has this thick blue belt going around in light azure. Same color as his mask, which a bit drapes down onto the front and back. And then his head is in light azure. He has a Z symbol on the top there. Uh, he has these big black eyes. And then he is just frowning. Obviously, no double face because it's just a plain head. Overall, this is a really interesting minifig. Catman! No, this is not a version of Batman. This is a completely separate character. This is Catman. He is a villain who is basically Batman, except cat themes. And sometimes he is also good. Sounds kind of like Catman. I mean, Catwoman. Except a man. This is getting too confusing for me. With the Batmans and the Catmans and the Catwomen, this is just... Okay, let's just focus on the minifig here. As you can see, he has two Wolverine-esque claws. He actually kind of reminds me of Wolverine and Batman combined. Once again, the very papery cape. I don't understand why they did the papery capes in this series and not the cloth capes. He has the version 3 Batman cowl. And unlike the other Batmans where the eyes are printed, uh, this one it's just the headband which then sticks through onto the shape. It's not printed eyes on the black headband or pink headband in Fairy Batman's case, or in this case, it would be a brown headband. He has a bunch of abs there, and he has, like, a cat symbol there. You really can't see much else. It's time to take some stuff off. Here he is with all that other stuff taken off. You can see his face a bit better, and it's in the same dark nougat color, which is used in Barbara Gordon and Commissioner Gordon and the Mayor. That's something that I noticed that they did with a lot of, like, really important kind of civilian characters in the Lego Batman movie, is they have the dark nougat skin color. Maybe it was to make them stand out more. I'm not sure, but that's something that I kind of noticed. And as you can see, no back printing, but once again, I'm fine because it's going to be covered up by the cape. He has double printed legs here, which are brown and yellow. And also a mistake that I just noticed on the sheet here for Catman is if you look there, it shows the brown on top and the yellow on bottom. When it's actually brown on bottom and yellow on top, they like gave him shorts here. When there, he's supposed to have brown boots. So that's a little mistake that I've noticed that I didn't see anyone else point out. And I haven't seen it ever said anything about. So that's just kind of something interesting. And then he has those little straps there. They look kind of like parachute straps. I'm not sure why they're there or what they are. Now we have the second animal minifig that was like originally a minifig that's in a costume who is now a villain. First we had Orca, which was the shark reprint. Now we have March Harriet, who is a bunny reprint. She has this dark nougat costume here with the dark nougat bunny uh, helmet, which she's kind of a weird character when you really think about it. She's basically just dressed as a bunny committing crimes and she has a Tommy gun. It's kind of random if you think about it. Then she has like these little leather van braces there. Her legs are dark nougat. She has a little bit of detailing there with the black stripes. And as you can see, this body's molded in dark nougat. A lot of dark nougat here. A little tiny bit of detailing on the back. There's a lot more on the front with the bow. If we remove the Tommy gun, you might be able to see that a bit better. If we remove her hat, you can see the face print a bit better. She's just kind of smiling. She has a little bit of, like, a dot there on her face, like a mole or something. No double face, like with most of these minifigs. Overall, she's a strange minifig who's great for pieces. So that way you can get more minifig bunnies. Next up is Calculator. He's a very interesting minifig, to say the least. This purple and white color combination is slightly strange and not something... You see a lot of, he has this kind of 
white armor piece here that I think I've seen before on some space minifigs. Them like handles down there that look kind of like jetpacks. That's not exactly the best piece to use. It's not very comic book accurate, but hey, whatever. He has this visor, which says 07734, which is commonly known as the calculator trick to get the calculator to say hello. On top of the visor, he just has a few of these like squares there on the front here. He has a little calculator keypad. With all the numbers, the plus, the minus, and the equals. On the back of the legs, you can see that it's uh, double molded. On the side, the white dots continue. Now I'm going to take off this armor and helmet so you can see the rest of him a bit better. This actually looks a bit more comic book accurate. If you were to take off the main armor piece and just put this on, that would actually be a lot more comic book accurate because he didn't have his bulky armor. Here you can see the printing. Now he has this six pack. The white dots going around, white dots on the arms, and he actually has a bit of back printing. That is, like, kind of hard to see wearing this. You can barely see it, but it is possible. You can see his face a bit better. It's really not that much special. He just has those kind of glowing white, angry eyes, and then a weird little kind of evil grin. Now we have King Tut, a nod to the 60s Batman. He was made specifically for the 60s Batman. And if we start looking around here, you can see that he has a Cobra staff here. If we take it out of his hand, you can see that's like very detailed down here. It has a bunch of little designs and such carved into the thing, the main handle there. And then the top here looks like a King Cobra. He is also... Holding a live snake, which I don't ever remember him doing in a TV show. Yes, I've watched most of the episodes, don't judge. Just like the generic green snake. Nothing that special. Then he's wearing this pharaoh headdress, which is a really nice piece. It's been used in some adventurer sets, I'm pretty sure. Has gold detailing down the sides there. And a bit over right next to the sides of the forehead. The back here has some nice like wrinkle markings built in. And that looks like the... Uh, tail of a cobra and then once again the clothy cape and I mean a uh, papery cape instead of the clothy cape I don't know why most of these have the papery capes then you can see the front printing a bit better he has like the continuation of his clothing here I'm not exactly sure what it'd be called you can see like some blue and white kind of shorts type things underneath he has a bunch of gold printed on the front now I'm going to take off the cape and the headdress now we can see the prints much better you can see the top print here, and you can see that scarab beetle a lot better. You can see, like, a bit of necklace design in there. You can see his face a bit better. It has the classic fake beard thing that pharaohs wear, and he looks kind of puzzled. No alternate face, no back printing, and this is very interesting, something that I don't see much of. I see double-molded legs quite a lot, but not where one is molded in two different colors and the other is molded in two different. This is molded in tan and red, and this is molded in tan and white, which makes sense because you see mostly white on this side, especially on the side where the robes kind of fade out, and you just see that white pants there, and here, it's mostly the red. So that's something very interesting that I really like that they did that you don't normally see. Now we have Girl Emperor Palpatine. Wait, no, never mind, it's not Girl Emperor Palpatine. It's the mime. She has these lightning shock things, which I'm not sure if she had those. I really didn't do that much research on her. She, I basically heard a brief mention of her in a video, and I know her backstory, except I don't really know her power, so I'm not sure if the lightning things would be accurate. But if we take those out of her hand, she doesn't look anything like Emperor Palpatine now. She has this big kind of navy blue mohawk, and this is a very rubbery piece. You can like kind of bend it and stretch it a bit. It's kind of the harder rubber. She has these pink legs here, these kind of magenta legs. And they have stripes going around. She's wearing a black leotard here with a bit of netting up there. She has this uh, mime painted face. And then also it looks like this might be some spandex under the leotard because the pink stripes, pink and black stripes, they carry up to here. And you can see it a bit over there. There's just a bit of back printing to continue the belt and to continue the little spandex underneath the leotard. 
geez, and that's all 20 of them. A lot of them are very interesting, and this is probably one of my favorite minifig series so far. Maybe The Simpsons is my favorite, but this is a very great series, and I highly recommend you get many of these. My personal favorites are Fairy Batman and Eraser. Also, I think they should make a Lego Batman movie series too, including some of the villains that don't come in sets and don't come in this line like Egghead. And also maybe include a cheaper way to get Alfred because he only comes in the Batcave, which is either the most expensive or the second most expensive set in the whole line. So I think they should make a cheaper way to get him, get some more of the Batman suits that you see in the background of the racks in the movie and get some of the other villains that they haven't already made. Well, that's all. And one last word of advice before I go, I'm Batman.